All right. Hey guys, it's your girl, Amber, AKA watch Amber. And this is our Patreon Friday night, all about sex talk with myself and herpes goddess herself. So I'm watch Amber. Um, I help women heal on purpose. I've been called to help women feel unashamed, empowered, and worthy. And I'm using my real life experiences to do so. Um, I'm the confidence queen and I'm an entrepreneur, certified life coach. And I'm so grateful for your presence here on this Friday night. And thank you for your support. If you're here, that means you're supporting us at a, um, a different level. And we're so grateful that you're here. So I'm going to pass it to uh, Shana so she can introduce herself. My name is Shana Singleton, a.k.a. the Herpes Goddess, Clapback Queen, Mama Queen Chef. I have grown the largest herpes community of over 2029K because I inspire people to love themselves more. The mission is to make everyone uncomfortable until the herpes community feels comfortable being open about their status and proud of their sexuality. And I'm so happy to have everyone here tonight. We are talking about sex. It is yes. Friday and it's time to talk about some sex. What do we want to know? What do we want to talk about before we get started? Like, what's up? <laughs> Can I tell y'all what's up? Yeah, tell me, please. Hey, y'all. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the ocean or the sand or <laughs> this like. I don't know what it is. But every time I go on this type of vacation where I'm like a tropical vacation, all I do want to do is like have sex. Like, and I'm just like, like, is this the is the setting? Like, I'm the I'm on a whole ass girl trip, and by girl I mean like one other person. Like, I'm on a whole ass like, and I'm just like, and there are some couples here, and they're not, but I'm just like this inner this energy right here creates like I want to be up to no good. Where's my man? Or where's the my man for the night? Like all types of thoughts is running through my head. So that's where I am right now in the middle of Costa Rica, like wilding and like <laughs> mentally wilding, not really. Wow. I'm trying to physically well too, though. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you better go to that herpes Ganeva group and say who are here from Costa Rica. <laughs> but the thing is, like, we've already met a few people mm -hmm. on night one. And so we were chilling with them last night. And uh, I was just like, and so it's just so crazy. And we've met people all day. I'm just like, I think my confidence really is attracting people at another level. And it's just like, I don't know what it is. I ain't asking no questions, but yeah. So I don't know. Of course, I'm gonna keep y'all posted if anything goes down. Um, that means, of course, if I did anything, I would be disclosing prior to doing anything. So like that whole conversation will happen. That's not that doesn't go out the window because I'm on vacation. And even if it will be on some like one only, uh, I'm here for a good time, not a long time type stuff. I was I was still disclosed, so I would never have any type of sexual contact without having that conversation. So I'm I'm not saying that I am. I'm not saying that I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm letting y'all know first. So um, that's what that's what these type of vacations do to me. So um, I feel you. Herpes hasn't changed anything about sex for me. Herpes allowed me to be co more confident. Well, healing from my diagnosis allowed me to be more confident, which allowed me to be more like open and liberated in my sexuality and how I feel about sex and wanting to get in X, Y, and Z. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Shana, like... I feel you. I lived in Hawaii for three years and I told myself that I would never get pregnant. I left Hawaii with a kid and some her. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so um, I know what you mean about the scenery and the vibes and the water and the trees and the temperature and all of that. Um, I actually have a story. Yes. My child's father. I don't know. We was wilding. We decided to go it, to one of the northern beaches on the island that we lived on. And um, it was a full moon and it's bright. Like the moon is lighting up the sky. The sky still looks blue. The ocean looks beautiful. We decide we want to have sex where the water and the sand touch. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a vibe, right? Water, <laughs> sand, moon, nighttime, your man. Vibes. This is how Niall was conceived. I'm pretty sure I got pregnant that night. Oh my God. I had sand in my vagina for a week. 
Oh my God. I was trying to get all the sand out, and then in my discharge, it was coming clumps. Oh my God. Of sand. I had I had bacteria vaginosis. I it was terrible. His dick, he said his dick felt like he had rug burn on it. <laughs> Man, it, it it was horrible, y'all. It was a rug burn. <laughs> listen, listen. If you Sorry. ever gonna have sex on the beach, get yourself a tent. <laughs> so you're not in the sand. Protect your cootie cat because the water and the sand is vicious, y'all. Just not just a towel. She said a whole tent. You don't want to, yeah, you need a tent. I'm telling you, for over a week, I had sand coming out of me. That's when horrible. I was wiping, when I was peeing, again, my discharge in my panties. I, I, would, <laughs> I was sick. I was so sick. And just when I thought I was getting rid of it, I still had sand. <laughs> Towards the end of the sand, get, guess what want to pop up? The oh, no. Oh, the razor oh, bump. Oh, the motherfucking oh, razor bump. The razor bump. <laughs> the fucking razor bump. <laughs> it was not a razor bump. Oh, and then two all weeks right. after it that, like what, up. it was just a mess, y'all. It was a whole mess. It all started from that beach sex. Ooh, well, if I do any Christ. type of sex, it's going to be in, in a bed, but I'm going to let y'all know. Okay. Thank you, China. Right. So, y'all, <laughs> does anybody want to share? Anybody have any questions specifically or have a story specific or anything? Want to keep it in the topic or in the realm of sex? sex um shana usually has activities for or like you know uh icebreakers if you guys don't have anything particular you want to share but we do like to open it up with um time to share just because we know some people might come with a question in mind so does anyone have anything they want to share at this moment are you guys okay with just going into kind of talking um sharing together hey pamela hey akila hey leslie leslie what you got you took yourself off mute no, I was going to say I'd, I'd rather just go with the icebreaker. I don't have okay. any Okay. All right. I, I was about to say the same icebreakers, but then I feel like Santa going to have like some little real pop, like some real stuff that make you say, hmm, maybe I should have told a story. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm glad you started to learn. <laughs> right. Be but, careful what you ask for. You just might right. get it. We playing dare and double dare through famous <laughs> icebreakers. Listen, I, this might be an. I, I'm looking. I'm looking through my stuff right now. I might have a good icebreaker for y'all. I'm not ready. So, um, let's talk about our JJs. The last thing we want to feel is dirty. I know that was for me. And um, before I was diagnosed with herpes, I used to suffer from back to back BV. And every time I would go get medicine to fix my BV, I was I would had a yeast infection because of antibiotics. It was a, it was a whole forever cycle. So mm-hmm. when I found out I had herpes, um, my vaginal self care has changed tremendously because I'm like, yo, I gotta figure out this BV. So it's one less thing that's making me feel dirty. I don't want to have herpes and smell like fish back to back to back to back to back. It's just, it's just not it for me. And not a good look. So what are some ways that you, what are some things you do for yourself every week for your vagina every week? What are some of your self vagina self-care rituals? I would love to know. Those are great. That's a great question. Has anybody got one? Or I can share my uh, weekly ritual. Um, well, the thing is, it's what I finally decided to do is like, I made this conscious decision to start treating my bidet like my face. Like I have a cleanser, I have a toner, I have like a serum, I have a moisturizer, I have a, like an extra moisturizer. Like I have a regimen for my face and I never had a regimen for my bidet. Like I never had any type of just like even the external part of it. Um, and even like to make it look appealing and attractive, like just as far as my most attractive to me and what I felt like it was attractive. And, um, even internally, like as far as just like drinking water, as far as, you know, not putting specific, you know, like fragrance based soaps and things inside of you, not dushing things like that. Like I started, um, what I, what I literally do is I exfoliate the outside, like the whole area three times a week with this exfoliant that's, you know, can be used every day. I literally have a Yoni soap that I use. Um, I wonder if I'm too loud. Okay. My, okay. My friend, she's not taking that. I have a Yoni soap that I use. Um, that's all natural. I literally have like a moisturizer that I put on like a body moisturizer that has, um, 
that specifically like helps soothe and calm your skin. I'll put that on. Um, but I'm very conscious about my water intake. Um, I'm very conscious about, um, washing myself with only my fingers and not like a rag and things like that. Like I'm super intentional about the care that I give my bajay, and I was not always like that. So those are some of the things that I do, um, consistently. And I get waxed. So I get my bajay waxed every three to four weeks. That's my preference. So that's what I do. Thank you for sharing. I guess for me. Sorry, Akila. No, I'm sorry too. Sorry for interrupting. And thank you as well, Amber, for sharing too. I feel like for me, it's, I don't know. I don't feel like I do anything different. I do have those moments where if I have an outbreak that I don't feel myself. Um, so I don't feel like I do anything different. But a lot of the things that I do now worry about is just like making sure that my pH balance is on point so I don't get, you know, any type of BB or anything like that. So for me, I worry more so about like my pH and just making sure that I'm doing everything I can to make sure it's right. Even like with my husband, I'm like, oh, we can't have sex. Make sure you wash the dick first or something like that. If you haven't showered today, let's do that before we have sex. Like I'm super cautious now. And even we have kids together and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I can't have kids now because I tie my tooth. And I'm like, mm, still don't have, you know, still don't nut in me type situations because that can mess up my pH. And I'm like, look, look, make sure you're looking. Like, I'm, I'm more so concerned about my pH balance being thrown off than anything. Um, thank you for sharing, Akila. So, uh, Shana, talk about, like, how do y'all feel about your pHs? Like, how do y'all feel about, like, do y'all do so, like stuff? Yeah, I want to talk about that because like she's talking about like having him like come in her or whatever. And I'm just like, like, dudes, do they like love to do that? Do they understand that we don't like that? Do y'all like that? How do y'all feel about that? I personally do not like it at all, like ever. But I understand. But I'm just like, and it definitely goes my pH off. So I'm just like, what do y'all, what do y'all think about that? When I was sexually active, um, if it was casual sex, I didn't like it. But if it was, example, his father back there, it was not all in me. You know, we, <laughs> you know, it was that was the conversation with us. So <laughs> I guess it depends <laughs> on the person. I don't know. <laughs> shoot, <laughs> that's why I got pregnant, y'all. Not shoot the cover. Shoot, not all in me. John was like, shoot it up. <laughs> Oh, he shot it up. Got the whole thing. <laughs> so, can you hear me? Hello? Go ahead, Pamela. Okay. I don't know if y'all can hear me. We hear you, Pamela. Okay, babe. So, I, um, back to Amber's original question, I originally, like, I said, I'm, I'm really, I'm 23. So I'm really like at the beginning of learning myself and like learning what my body is and what it does and good and bad sig signals and stuff like that. So for a long time, I didn't know you weren't supposed to put soap in your coochie. Like that's how my mama taught me to watch my coochie. You, just, you get some soap and it needs, you need to wash yourself because then if not, you gonna stink. Well, I kept having problems like what is going on? I keep getting these infections for no reason. And my doctor was like, well, do you use soap? I'm like, yeah. Ain't that how you're supposed to clean yourself? <laughs> and after I stopped using soap, it fixed just about everything. So I don't do nothing per se special. I've actually been contemplating getting waxes because I'm, like I said, I'm trying to learn more of myself down there. So I'm trying to see, um, the reason I want to get waxes is to see if I do have any bump, then I can connect. Okay. That has to be an outbreak because I didn't shave, if that makes sense. So for me, it's been, it's been a little bit of a journey learning my, my, I'm upset, not, I can't say upset, but I feel like for a little bit, I mistreated my my poor little Yoni, and I didn't value her the correct the correct way, if that makes any sense. 
No, I feel that because I didn't value mine the correct way, neither. And my mother wasn't sitting down talking to me. This is how you wash it. This is how you're supposed to wipe. This is what you do here. This is what she was not doing that. And I don't think it was intentionally. It probably just wasn't done for her. So mm-hmm. she had to learn her vagina by herself. And I guess it's just a it's a cycle that someone has to break, you know? Um as far as me, uh, you can still get a hair butt bump when you wax because the hair is oh. still going to grow in. Even though it thins it out in the very beginning, you can still get hair bumps just to let you know that. And um, I can tell you my 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 bump started to slow down too once I let the hair grow down there. I know people don't like to hear that shit, but it's really amazing how much your vagina changes when you when you revert to its natural state. You can learn a lot about it. My BVs were less, you know, you know less yeast infections. Um, it's a barrier for your vagina. It's supposed to keep things out. So um, I always suggest if, if you are someone who suffers from back-to-back razor bumps and discoloration, then give yourself a break. I'm not anti-shaving at all, y'all, but I don't shave my underarms for a reason so that when I go to events and I am ready to shave, my thing is not even, it's the same color as my whole skin because I never shave. So every time I do shave, it's just looking nice, clear, and smooth. And I love that. When I used to shave all the time, my armpits were not like that. So, um, I don't know how we got to armpits, guys. I be I be falling off track sometimes. My bad, y'all. Back to the coochie. <laughs> um, yeah, be like body hair. Yes, BG. Um, laundry detergent gives me BV. Silk panties, um, fragrances, tampons, pads. Tampons and pads have the tendency of not only taking your blood, but all the moisture out of your vagina as well. It dries you out, making it a breathing ground for bacteria. So if you are someone like me in the past who used to suffer from BV right after a period, it could be your tampons or your pads. Now I use a Diva Cup and I practice free bleeding as well. I know it sounds gross, y'all, but... um, This, how do you do that? Because... No. Oh. <laughs> I do it too. No way I can Yes, yes. Well, you know that you know it used to be a ritual for for the natives to let their yeah. blood run into the earth and moving forward. I guess for me it's different because I never really had like a heavy flow. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but then once I got my two sides, like I never had cramps either, so I've never experienced. Uh, menstrual cramps I never had to worry about like a heavy bleeding I used to always be on a regular and everything but I realized once I had got my tooth tied my cramps feel like death of hell I don't highly recommend (laughs) for anyone I'm so sorry for us women um so my cramps are super terrible and my flow is way heavier than it was before so I just get and I feel like I heard people use the cup but I personally haven't used it because I'm also clumsy and I feel like it'll just spill over somehow some way uh, yeah. And I'll be true for the day. Uh. Can I speak on that? Go ahead. Um, one second. Excuse me. Um, I uh, had got my tube side, and I was my period before. Before I got my tube side, my period only lasted like three days. So yep. after I got my tube side, it moved up to five days. Like my body changed after I got my tube side. I yes. recently just using the menstrual cup in January. My period went back to three days. It's crazy. Like my body changed once I started going natural, like the natural ways and doing stuff different. Wow. Thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, that's the chemicals and the stuff that they put in our pads and tampons and the shit we're supposed to use for our bodies. It's all a scam. (laughs) I feel like that pads, I don't, I don't, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like a just like kind of like a just women's that thing where it's like chloride free or something like that and i've been using that and i haven't had any problems because i feel like when i use like not really kotex but if i use like always or poise or something my skin is super sensitive and i would instantly rash out even if i had just put it on and i wear it for an hour and i instantly rash out 
Well, note to self. Look. <laughs> All right. So. I know, right? Let's get into BV. I um, I had the Morena burp control. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Amber. Okay, I had the Morena, and I had the Morena in my body for ten years, and well, five years, and then five years, and now I'm just able to have kind of my first period in, in, in like a decade, and because uh, I didn't have a period at all while I was on it, and I'm just kind of like reaching, trying to reach for products to decide like how am I gonna you know, manage my period when it comes back. And so I'm glad I'm kind of hearing this different kind of feedback because when I put my period, you know, had my period 10 years ago, it was pads or tampons. Like now there's just so many other options and like options that are better for our bodies and more natural. So I'm, I'm glad that you guys are sharing because it's just like, you know, that affects how your vajay works and how it feels, how it looks or it smells, how it acts and things like that which affect how we feel about it and how we how attractive or how sexually how how we want to interact sexually all that is tied into it so i'm definitely listening to these tips so yeah that's what i was just going to say i appreciate hearing everybody's perspective on that my sister uses depends that's because <laughs> does she <laughs> don't want to ruin her panties so she'll get a pants <laughs> her whole period she wearing adult diapers she thought i should i don't want to ruin I my panties <laughs> <laughs> me too to try the pens i want to mess up my about panties that. <laughs> you know oh they, they, sell, they sell the 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 free bleed panties it's when um it doesn't make a mess and their menstrual cycle, their period panties, and you just wash them and then you put them back on. And um, they have, I guess, the overnight panties. They have it, you know how pads got different sizes? Well, I guess they mm-hmm. work with different flow too. If you have a heavy flow, if you have a light flow. So I thought that was pretty cool when I seen it. That is cool. Yeah, and they're cute too. They nice little material, all of that. They're cute panty. <laughs> <laughs> I might buy me some depends. I, it's one thing I hated when I had a period is that I always feel like I messed up my panties, even with like pads and things like that. It was yeah. just like I'm annoyed. So, ladies, I have a question. Now that we're having a conversation about panties, surprisingly, this I seen this on TikTok last night. <laughs> so, I seen a post that you're supposed to change your panties every six to nine months. I had to pause after reading that because I'm like, damn, I don't think I do that. And I saw the the next snippet said, hmm, my panties get upgraded to period panties. And I'm not gonna lie, my panties get upgraded to period panties. Like I don't <laughs> I totally change them out. They just they upgrade. Like that's it. It's time to it's time for a change and this change is period panties. Same. So do you ladies do that? <laughs> I do that, but I also do like a nice fresh pack of period panties too from Walmart. Give me a you know ten pack hanging <laughs> put it alone. <laughs> <laughs> because so, usually, am I usually the panties that get old are too sexy to for period. You know what? I'm a, I need to change, guys, because I feel like I'm bougie because I haven't stopped at Walmart for panties in so long. What? I'm like Victoria's Secret out. They're, they're just taking my money. I'm telling you. You better get some yes. on your period. I know. Yes. <laughs> yes. I used to only I wear know. Victoria's so Secret draws. I was like, no, just Victoria's Secret draws. I will go to Target and, and Walmart in a heartbeat for some draws now for my period. <laughs> I, I, Absolutely. I need to look forward to that during my periods is the big old granny draws, the comfy draws and not giving the hell. <laughs> That's yes. the best one. <laughs> yes. And Walmart got the most comfortable panties. I love wearing grandma panties. I, I like you panties, <laughs> but they uncomfortable. So I like grandma panties. It's true. I give you I haven't worn them in so long, but I agree. Granny panties are extremely comfortable. Extremely. And what's even more comfortable, I ain't even gonna lie, the Medea the Medea pajamas. They with yes. the long, you know, the long floral <laughs> dresses. Mumu. <laughs> we call it mumu. We call it patas. We call it patas. <laughs> I got a mumu on right here. I love mumu. Exactly. Look, they, those are comfy. Hell yeah. This came from Walmart, y'all. I, I love this. <laughs> yes. I'll gladly go out one of those with the little okay. bit slippers on. What do you going to say about, about uh, BV? 
Yeah. Oh, I got them too. We yeah, I'm really in here like somebody. You don't have to talk about BV. I mean, we kind of just we can get back to if we can get back to BV if y'all want to. We can (laughs) talking about that. I do have a question for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What up? If you're driving, I'm sorry you can't participate. <laughs> mm. it's oh yeah. Too. If I have to write, yeah. <laughs> but um, we're gonna play. Put a finger down. Oh, it's something you've done. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. All right. Turn y'all's cameras on. <laughs> Have you allowed your partner to penetrate you before you were fully ready? So you put a finger down if that's true? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, do you push yourself to do things you don't want to during sex? I have in the past. Me too. Um, have you used artificial lubes to have sex when your body wasn't ready? Um, do you have sex for this have you had sex for the sake of peace in the past at times when you do not feel emotionally connected um while you are having sex are you in your head asking yourself am i making him or her feel good mm-hmm. Have you been in your head saying, how do I look right now? Let's say you're on top. Have you ever questioned how you looked? Mm -hmm. Have you ever questioned how you smell? You smelt the sex and it kind of made you felt less sexy or a little bit insecure. It might have been you. Have you ever had sex and your priority was to make your partner come instead of making yourself come? Mm, mm, mm. have you ever been in a position that hurts but your partner liked it so much that you put up with it and your screaming sound like moans and have you ever done something during sex you don't like but your partner does maybe like a threesome or I I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Wait, have I sucked somebody's toe? I got one finger up though because I've done all <laughs> these things in the past. <laughs> okay. How many fingers? Okay. So Leslie got three fingers up. Pamela, how many you got? This five. Five. Okay. Pamela got five. Okay. Akila, how many you had over there? I guess she was driving. So you have one finger up. Finger up. I had some bad sexual. This is bad sexual habits. This is what this exercise yeah. is called. And I had a lot wow. of bad sexual habits before wow. herpes. Again, I say it's never the herpes, y'all. <laughs> it's oh, never, oh, it's oh. never the herpes. It'd be the shit oh. I haven't dealt with or you haven't dealt with before the herpes. Mm-hmm. Like the rise on up. Mm. How did that exercise make y'all feel? Let's talk about it. That was my first time ever playing that game. And mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that version. Because it made me question if I'm if I really enjoyed mm-hmm. my sex in my room. I agree. Mm. Mm. It makes you self-reflect, right? You don't mm-hmm. want to think about your sex sexual encounters that way. They they just Happen. Happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Happen. We we think about how it makes us feel, but we don't think about all the emotions that we go through during sex. Some women cry during sex. I haven't experienced that one yet. But some women, some people have angry sex, which is the most toxic thing that you can do, my loves. That was something I used to do with my child's father all the time. And really? Yeah, we we had angry, passionate 
sex. You like, mean angry like, like y'all was mad at each other? Yeah, I can be mad calling him the black ass and word going in on his while, while y'all are doing it today and he come back yeah we have angry sex wow toxic don't this do it. toxic <laughs> don't fucking do it y'all we both Scorpios <laughs> though so that is a problem y'all that's <laughs> it um but it's a lot of different emo- emotions you can go go into having sex and it's important that you are aware and you're not just having sex with anybody some people have energies and past traumas tagged on to them that you don't know anything about no, um, no. and you can have the best sex in your life and feel like shit a week later because you yep. had sex with that person and you're not you're trying to figure out why do i feel like shit right now little do you know you just taken in the worst type of person's energy <laughs> that you could have taken in for yourself. And now it's affecting your day and how you show up, how you act. Um, there's a fine line between love and lust. Wow. And sometimes sex can really make that line blurred. It can make it blend in. Um Again, I hate to talk about this man so much, but we had sex our second night of hanging out with each other. We told Mm -hmm. each other we loved each other the second night of hanging out with each other. And I didn't leave his house after the second night of hanging out with each other. And then I was with him for three years on and off after that. Um, Mm -hmm. It's funny because I had sex with him. And his personality at the time and the sex was so good and I was young that I fell deep into it and I had to get to know him in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And as I got to know him, I realized I was not attracted to him. Sorry, Pamela, but I was the other person on the other team. I would like randomly pick up and leave my child's father just to be with somebody else. I never cheated, but I will end the relationship before I decide to be with somebody else and um, one thing he's always expressed to me is that he's always felt like an option so I think about how quickly I had sex and I could have avoided so much turmoil (laughs) and pain if I would have decided to get to know the man before having sex with the man Um, I feel like a lot of the things you share, I feel like I love the exercise. It was really good to reflect on how a large part of my sex life, it's literally always been about the other person. First, I haven't even considered that my needs can get met and that there was somebody who wants to fulfill my needs in the same way that I'm prioritizing trying to fulfill theirs. Mm-hmm. And I, that was my mindset prior to herpes too. So like when I say, like when Shana says it's not the herpes, like I had these ways about me and I never really stopped and realized that this was what I was doing. I had just been doing it for so long. But when something like herpes came into my life, it made me stop everything I was doing and really get a chance to understand, like, and acknowledge that I had some ways about me. So, you know, Though I hadn't done everything on that list, there was a lot of times where I was having sex to keep the peace. I was having sex because I didn't want him to get it from somebody somebody else. I was having sex because I felt like, oh, we're in a relationship. This is just what you do. No, none of those reasons, none of those things are reasons to have sex. None of them. And so um, like I've just I just look at sex completely different now. And um like Shana just said, she was like, you don't know this person can have all these energies attached to you. And I'm just like, damn it, my one night stand fun just be ruined now. Cause I'm like, I don't know what energy you got attached to you. And I'm not trying to bring them back to the United States with me. So I'm just like, damn it. But she's right though. So I'm just listening. I'm listening and learning with y'all. We know she come on Clubhouse Monday with some stink ass attitude. <laughs> like Amber got some. And she got some somebody with some whack ass energy. <laughs> We'll see. We get help. So I'm just like, oh, Lord. <laughs> What'd you say, Pamela? 
I said, bruh, like you be staying. <laughs> you the company's queen, so that's what you attract. You're gonna attract something Period. real good. Period. Set- Period. <laughs> I swear, y'all. I swear, I'm just like, he was like, you know what? He's like, you, he just his game, like he just talked like you just know he can't get enough of me. And I'm just like, nigga. Okay, so <laughs> somebody else talk about something. <laughs> I do. Uh, I want to talk about children. Look at how we talking about sex. Look at that exercise we just did. We should be on that level of talking about sex with teenagers. It's hard to, we don't want to do it. We don't want to believe that the teenagers are having sex, but guess what? They're going to have sex with or without your approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're going to drink with or without your approval. They're going to try weed with or without your approval. You react negatively. They ain't going to tell you shit. It's that. What do I do? Where do I go? But I feel like these conversations are necessary. I wish somebody was talking to me. Don't just have sex when you're not ready. Foreplay is important. Make sure she's wet. If she's not wet, she's telling you that you don't like the person and you shouldn't be having sex. Your vagina is basically telling you if you should have sex or not. Mm -hmm. Just your thoughts and reasons for having sex or reasons for letting anyone have sex with you. What are your sexual standards? Does anyone have sexual standards? Besides Akila, because I heard her name a few. Yes, you got to take a shower, my love. I've been young before. I've, I've had the dirty dick and I've had BV right after it. So that's one. Two, you have to brush your teeth. We might have to wait a little bit, maybe a half hour before we have sex because I don't want double bacon cheeseburger in my vagina. Mm -hmm. You got to wash your hands up underneath some nails. If you think you're going to put a finger, if you're going to pat the pussy, I need you to wash them nails. Um, Let's talk about the importance of dental hygiene. People who clean their tongues, people who don't clean their tongues. You know how much bacteria is on a... Dirty tongue, mm-hmm. and then it's going right down there in your parts. That's a standard. Mm-hmm. And and they be trying to stick the tongue inside. To like, <laughs> sir, I'm nasty. I'm a part of Team <laughs> Girl. Ass, and I say that proudly. <laughs> but one thing I didn't know when I was younger is, again, you're not supposed to go from the front to the back to the front. Yeah. Back in the days, yeah. I ain't give a fuck about that. We. Eat the, bo- eat the booty like groceries. Groceries. <laughs> Put the dick in it. Take that shit out. But so we was doing the most, okay? And that's Wilding. Wilding. I was 16, 17. Eight. Let's be real. I got. I had dick for the first time when I was 14 years old, y'all. I was having sex, okay? And I was just winging it because I couldn't have this conversation with adults. No teen wants mm-hmm. to do it. That's uncomfortable. No parent wants to do it because they don't want to talk about that shit with their kids. They want to pretend like their kids ain't doing it. But that's the cycle we all need to break in this group. Something. Yeah, because I, I actually had, sorry to interrupt you, I actually just had that conversation um, with my husband earlier today. And I told him, I was like, when our kids are at that age, like, you know, we've already decided, like, he's going to have that conversation with my son, with our son. And I'll have the conversation with our daughters. Yeah. And because I, as, for me growing up, like the same with you, I lost my virginity at 14 and I didn't have that talk with my mom. Like, even when she found, she took me to the doctor to find out if I was having sex or not. And even when she did find out, she still didn't give me a talk. You know, I mm. don't want my kids to grow up and be, you know, confused or trying to figure out these answers or find the answers out on their own when as a mom or just a parent in general, I should be having this conversation with them. Yeah. Mm. And I've noticed the the slight power struggle that I've had with my mother. And um, it's hard for parents to switch from, this has been my child for this many years. And now this is my adult child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm that transition in relation the times we're supposed to be having those conversations with our children is going on during the transition of mm. 
your kid wanting to be an independent and you being a parent, like you, my kid, I've raised you, I feed you, I clothe you, I do this, I do that. And the kid's like, I don't need you to do that anymore. And if you are going to do it, can you don't throw it in my face so I can figure, <laughs> so I can figure yeah. out how to, you know, do other things. And um, it's important. And it was important for me to mention that in today's conversation, I want to start pushing that more. The, the, the talk about sex with, teenagers down to the nitty-gritty the the traumas that can come from sex the emotions that can come from sex the emotions that you might go through during sex knowledge of self before having yes. sex requirements it's so raw sex unprotected sex is glamorized it is it's ridiculous it, it is glamorized it makes to be to, to look way better than it actually is. Um. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm I'm stuck on the glamorized part of things. It makes me sad because then STIs are so prevalent within sex itself. Sex is mainstream. We hear about sex all day, but you never ever 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 hear about the people living with the STIs. And there's a lot of people living with lifelong STIs. It's not a conversation. It's not a topic. The fact that people know their status is not glamorized, but unprotected sex and irresponsible sex is glamorized. And then it's the people who are having irresponsible sex that are spreading these STIs and STDs. And then people who know what they have, who actually did the responsible thing, went to get tested, know their status that are being stigmatized. Mm. It's a sad narrative. Shana be preaching. She's right. There's a lot of teenagers who are contracting herpes. There's a lot of teenagers who are contracting these viruses, or even if they're STDs that or STIs that can be treated, there are yeah. so many teenagers who are like this is such an important conversation Shana because I did not have that talk with my mom I didn't lose my virginity I lost my virginity when I was 17 and um you know we were one of the last people I felt like it was to my high school sweetheart and um I didn't know what I was doing like you know we was just figuring it out at together because neither one of us had that conversation so to break down and have open dialogue about what's really going on I think that would be a great addition to you know the movement because it's just about it's about everybody and that will help break the stigma because you're right we could talk about sex and we can show people doing it and we could say how wet it is and how big it is and how long it is and how we going all night and things like that then we're not really having the conversations that are educating folks because i don't want to go all night honestly not all not most of the time i don't and i and there's certainly there's certain parts of sex that are glamorized that aren't even actually based in like what most people are what I know I enjoy, but that conversation is not being had either. Yeah. I don't want it all night neither. I think I, I like the, is it because I'm old. I like the <laughs> I'm into my men and we have sex and we cuddling and we sleep and we have sex again and we break in and we have sex again. I can do that type of thing. Yes. Woman. But please yes. don't be having sex with me for no hour. Girl, if I'm not having back to back to back to back, I mean, if I am, I won't even be able to last no two hours because my body is gonna be shut down. Convulsing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had sex for four hours straight with like a couple five minute breaks, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, I orgasm all four hours. Like it was. Sore so the next day. <laughs> I mean, it was I it was that. worth it. <laughs> oh shit! My mind was so sore. I I was in the tub trying to get get my vagina in the faucet <laughs> to give it some some cold water. It was the best. That's <laughs> I the hours of sex. <laughs> I ain't had hours of sex in years. You yeah, I had like saying that like increments of hours <laughs> <laughs> spread out over the night. <laughs> you can't walk afterwards. This is it's power to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you, like you, 
<laughs> yeah, uh-huh. and he exactly. was old, and he's older than me, so he like, hold on, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, you know, after a little bit, after all that, I'm exhausted. So I'm just like, well, I'm going to sleep. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm proud of you, Pamela, just to even be there <laughs> and talking to us. And wanting to do this growth and wanting to do this work at 23 years old, that is amazing. Remarkable. Remarkable. I need you to know that because 23-year-old Shayna did not give a f- no. about none of this. <laughs> yeah. would not I really all. appreciate y'all. And I'm so happy. I, I've been thinking about this all afternoon since you said it. You're almost a half a million. You're she's almost actually a over million. a quarter million. Yeah, like you're almost there. Like so you're almost at five hundred thousand people. <laughs> like Listen. wait till we get a million people. <laughs> like oh my god. Like it's gonna and be it goes to year. show. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's gonna be a million this year. Period. Like yeah. by Period. summertime. Right. Like but you have yes. to think with Shauna having so many. Just imagine that people that's following her. Those are people that actually have, you know, herpes that supported her just alone. That's just people that haven't followed her, aren't feeling comfortable to want to follow her. So that just goes to show how many people that she's touching just off her opening up, just how she is on TikTok. Because I found you on TikTok and I found you on TikTok before you even blew up. That's the funny thing. You weren't even blown up yet when I found you. Baby TikTok. Yes. I think it was like your first video. And I was just like, yo, she bold. And, you know, I was, you know, I have it. And I'm just like, yo, I can't do that. She's bold. And the next thing you know, I seen like two other videos. And I'm like, yo, how she get so many so fast? Like, (laughs) I was like, you. And that's what made me like really, like, really follow you. Um, even past like just TikTok, just follow you on everything else. Cause I was like, yo, she is that's gold to be that open with yourself, to not care, to be so. And TikTok is ridiculous because any and everyone sees it. Mm-hmm. Kia, Kia, you better yeah. speak life into me, girl. Yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> no out for us. All, all year round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I it's funny I was putting together me and Amber's um um like mini I just started a pitch deck so hopefully we can turn herpes can never into a non-profit and yeah. that is I had to research everyone else that's doing it and what the competition is looking like <laughs> you have this herpes advocate called her name is Ella Dolph Ella Dolphin she has done a TED talk she has been in MTV shows. Um, she kind of like blew up within the herpes community in like 2012, 13-ish. Well, her community is at 36K on TikTok. Then there's um, Belise Spivey, Black woman. She's 10K on Instagram and 18K on YouTube. Those two are the two people with the biggest herpes community. Mm. The biggest one is 36K. So mine's is at 229K right now. Mm -hmm. Compared to 36K. Mm -hmm. That is huge. Mm -hmm. The more people we can touch with herpes, the quicker we are to breaking this stigma. There won't be any stigma if we all can embrace the shit and change the narrative for ourselves. But we can't keep putting this sad, shameful, guilty, horrible, oh my gosh, herpes ruins my life narrative out there. That is the same narrative that made us all feel bad when we found out we had herpes. Yes. It wasn't no one else. <laughs> I'm not sure. And I can think not being funny, bro, when I say, like, y'all saved a motherfucker's life. Like, I cannot only think of the other people who you touched the same way you touched me. And imagine, like, it's so good. Like, it's so good. Y'all are doing such an amazing thing that 
the world is so insensitive to that they don't care that we exist. They don't care about our feelings. They don't care that, hello, we're still a normal person. <laughs> like, so it's amazing that you guys are doing this for us, for real, for real. Pamela. <laughs> Thank you, Queen. Love you. Um, Leslie, do you have anything you want to contribute? No, I was just listening, but I do appreciate you guys. And um, you guys have helped me a lot also. Um, But that's pretty much it. I just appreciate y'all. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure we do. Leslie be gang gang over on Clubhouse. She don't play around. She's always there supporting us. Um, And so, yeah. Um, I, I, I feel like people stop acting like we, we exist kind of what Pamela said when we get diagnosed is because when we get diagnosed, we kind of like reclude back into this, like into ourselves, into the shell, into this fear, into this guilt, into this doubt, into all the things that start happening in our minds when we hear that we have herpes. And so we have to realize that we're participating in um, how people perceive us. And it seems like, oh, we put our, we can put blame on ourselves there, but it's just anywhere you can feel like you can blame yourself some, for something, interchange that for that's an area that you are empowered in and that you can have power in that area. Because when I decided and realized that I had more control over the hurt, my herpes than I, you know, thought I did when I got diagnosed, that's when I was able to view it differently. That's when I no longer viewed myself as sad or it being sad or I was mad or I just looked at it like, wow, this is something, like I said, I could have never imagined, but I'm not going to be everyone else. I'm going to be the change that I needed and wanted to see because I knew so many other people were dealing with what I was dealing with just in silence. So um, I just, I'm so grateful. Like y'all be grateful for us. But like, like I tell, I told, I told a boy last night, I said, my life is about fulfillment at this point. And I keep saying that because it's so true. Like this herpes can never is fulfillment for me. Like if I did not get herpes. I would never even know y'all and it's almost like I don't even know what life would be like if I didn't know y'all you know what I'm saying but it's like I so it's so intentional the things that have happened in my life to get me here including my herpes and so the acceptance piece the acceptance piece accepting it not trying to rationalize it away not trying to justify it not trying to not trying to put any excuse in front of why you have it how you got it accepting that you have it and accepting that okay now what is this for what is this here to teach me and who look who it's connecting me with so it's got to be for a reason so i just want to say i appreciate y'all just as much I me and shane to be in our feelings about our community and i'm obsessed okay that's all i'm saying thank you amber I just want to let everyone know that um, I'm not ashamed of my herpes, but I'm also not proud to have herpes. I am proud, though, of the way I overcame herpes. Mm. And mm. I just want to remind y'all that Herpes. Herpes could never. <laughs> <laughs>